Hi everyone. Thanks for tuning in again to another one of these live talks, especially to promote the Wear Canada Proud event with uh, Fashion Magazine and the Canadian Arts and Fashion Awards with CAFA. I am Donna Bishop. I'm the host of the podcast Fashion Talks and have just been loving doing these talks, connecting with so many of our uh, leaders here in the industry. I'm super excited because next up is Mr. George Sully and I'm just waiting to see him add himself in. Just looking for George here. Uh, lots of these amazing talks have also been happening on the Fashion Canada handle, um, Odessa. All right, so Mr. George Sully is just coming in to join me. He is a, of course, a fashion designer in his own right and also the founder and creator of the Black Designers of Canada Index that'll be launching soon, right, George? Absolutely, hello everybody. Nice to Absolutely. see you. Thank you so much for joining me today to talk Thank about Wear nice Canada Proud. Wear Canada Proud. Um, one of the things that I've been asking everybody is what does Canada gain from having a really thriving, robust local industry? Um, Sorry, I just came right off the top, so I'm already hot and heated, Don. All right. All right. You're already revved up. <laughs> Um, what is Canada gain? I, I would say, you know what, having, I would, I would, I would switch that up a, a little bit. The question say, what would have Canada gain having an inclusive industry and a welcoming industry to all those mm -hmm. that have not been included? It, you know what? It would be the greatest thing because again, I'm coming off of conversations of just saying, you know what, we're not looking for, and again, speaking to black designers, we're not looking for more. We're looking for equal footing. And that's it because we have to literally, and what you're, this is the bonus that you're going to get off black designers right off the bat. Something you might have not known, maybe, maybe not. We have to work twice as hard, twice as good, double the fabrics, all these things just to have equal footing. So when you're actually going to a black designer, it's like, wow, I didn't even, wow, this is really impressive. I didn't even know it was that, about that. And it's kind of like, it's almost kind of like part insult too, because it's kind of like, I didn't even know. Wow. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And, but you're sitting there and saying, you know what? I, if I made anything less, I wouldn't even gotten in this room. Yeah. And those I will not take the surprise. <laughs> yeah. I won't take the surprise yeah. in your voice as insulting as it actually is when you tell me how amazed <laughs> you are at how good it is. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Can you, you know, something we were talking about is how important it is when there is a collective voice. And that's something that you're working on with uniting all of our, our Black designers and Black creatives together in one place. What is the power of having that kind of unity in an industry? Good question. Um, so many times is there, and even if you go back to 2019, wow, many moons ago, when you just typed up Canadian designers and then you'd see top Toronto Canadian designers, 30 top Toronto Canadian designers, 40, 10, five top designers, not one black designer. Oh wait, until February. Don't forget we got them for February and not the 28 days, maybe the first five days where people actually care, making sure that you get your story in there and then we can move on to, um, you know, uh, so on and so forth. Um, what makes it powerful is that I'm also making a point. I'm also making a point of saying if we were marginalized before or, or we, there was excuses for not carrying us or for not seeing us, here is a wall of 150 plus designers. Like what? Wait, so did you rewind? Did you just say 150? I said that because 
putting the call out and getting all of this, all of these, all, all these people, all of these black designers. Oh my God. Hi, love. Well, she couldn't be here today. As she, she says, hello. She watches. She's a fan. She's a fan. <laughs> so hopefully, she, hopefully she's still in orders, George. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. <laughs> like she was in tears. Hila was in tears seeing all these black designers because she knows my plight. She knows me. And then seeing my reaction, she's bawling. She's doing all like, I can't believe this. Because a lot of people just couldn't believe it. So then the power that it is, is it, it's actually looking outward saying, no more excuses from the stylist, the buyer, the distributor, the rep, the, 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 the. Because here we are. And guess what? We've had the craziest thing when you're looking at these designers, not even off the, like, not even fractured. They're, they're beautiful. The work is beautiful. It's excellent. And there's so many that are. So it's kind of like, you'd be like, you know what, George? But okay, okay, so you have 150, but let me guess. 10 are like the, like, we could work with, and the other ones are just charity cases. No, no, sorry. I have to take that one from you, too. No, it's just because if there's no problem and people are, are saying, you know what, there's no problem to see here. And if there's no problem and everyone's doing it together as a group, then are, we will always be muzzled because we're saying, saying, no, there is, there is, there is. And nobody's listening to us. And so I, 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 have, to, I, I have to go back to saying there is before Tuesday, whereas business as usual, mm -hmm. and there's not a black person on the list of top designers. And I look, I, I, could, I, could, I could Google and send you these links. It's, it's just crazy because it seems like it's 1960, but it's not. It's just 2019 before a pandemic and before George Floyd and before uh, our, one of our Canadian, our Canadian, one of our favorites, Amy Cooper is exposed. And we're all saying, see, what, that's what happens in America. And they're realizing, clutch my pearl, she's Canadian. She's one of our own. And now we have to speak about racism, systemic racism here in Canada. So the power behind us is literally to be seen and to say, you cannot avoid us. You cannot drive on the street and, or on the highway and see a burning car and then drive and look over and say, okay, well, I see that they're, they're out of the car, so that's good. And then just keep on driving. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is the point of all this. And, and I don't mean to you know, go, we don't have, I know we have a certain amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> George, talk to me a little bit about you know, there's so much being talked about about the importance of representation in the industry. Absolutely. Does that equal an equitable industry? Do they mean the same thing? Well, again, it just it just depends. I, I come in saying equal footing. And mm -hmm. I come in saying, you know what? You know what, Donna? For so many people are like, well, George, I see you get press. Or, or, or I see you get press. Or back in the day, I've seen something. You can't say that you know, I mean, you've not even gotten press. The only reason I've gotten pressed because I had to build it myself. I've had to learn Photoshop. I've had to learn Illustrator. I've had to learn InDesign. I had to learn videography. I've had to learn Adobe Premiere Pro, Logitech. I've, 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 had, to, I've had to use and learn and, and have to do so many things to build my own hype to say, bang on the table and say, look, I'm here. I'm right here, everybody. And then, man, what's that banging going on? Because we're yeah. in this group right here. And it seems that we have everyone here who is that at the door? Go to the door and find out who that is. And I'm, I'm yeah. doing this. And literally, because I built a ladder high enough to look inside, and it's a long, arduous, hard ladder to, to, to build, but I've been able to do that for myself. Yeah. And echo myself and celebrate myself loud enough for others to say, okay, fine. We, we, okay, George, okay, fine. George is here. Hi, guys. George is here. Really quick. Everybody happy? Root. Yeah. And then yeah. so... It's like getting credit for being in the spotlight. And you're like, yeah, because I built the spotlight. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and Donna, the problem is, is that for not every designer has the time and or the energy. They're starting right from the beginning saying, you know what, I'm not going to go to this big department store because there's never a chance they're going to look at me. There's not mm -hmm. enough George Sellies in these department stores for them to say, okay, well, George did it. I can do it. There's not enough of me. I'm only mm -hmm. one. And if you're a new designer saying, you know what, um, man, George did it, but that's only one guy. There's no way, like he got lucky or he's this, or he has money or he was raised. And guess what? No money, no raise. Uh, I'm self-made. 
Um, my family are Haitian. It came from uh, Haitian immigrants came came from Haiti, and to give us a better life. And you know, um, I was going to something with my dad, but I'm not going to do it to my dad because like, yo, it's going to be ball out like crazy, and you don't want to, you don't want this today. Yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to be happy and sell shoes and product, and like, like you know, can't wear Canada proud. So, um, but I will say that everything that I've earned, I've had to build and every, every echo chamber, I've had to literally build it. But like, I know a lot of designers don't have that, don't have that. Mm -hmm. They don't have those, the acumen and, and don't have these things. All they want to do is design and be celebrated. And that should be enough. They don't have that privilege. They don't have those opportunities. And I know for myself, the only thing I can do with help, because I'm asking, I'm not saying, you know, uh, white Canada, this, or no, no, I'm saying because even if it's for good or bad, whether you put up that tile on Blackout Tuesday for good reasons or bad reasons, I'm saying, you know what? The fact that there's energy, the fact that people want to stop talking and listen mm -hmm. is, is just enough for me to say, you know what? There's enough people that want to listen to change. So when, if, I, if I amass 150 plus black designers, they will be heard, they will be counted, they will be accepted, they will be loved, they will be adored, all these things that, that is just equal footing. I yeah. see this of, of my white counterparts that are loved and adored. I've helped build some of these brands that are loved and adored because you know what, guess what, Donna? I know how to build and, and I call myself a brand architect. I could literally take Donna today. I know you're busy. <laughs> but with your signature glasses that you have on right now and your face, red lipstick, I could literally make a nice portrait, character, logo, branding, flip it, build your website, market your product, shoot your product, manufacture it overseas and my connections while around the world within three weeks i can have donna with your own brand and literally sit in the background and everyone's oh donna of course yeah. donna, of course <laughs> yeah. and then put you on a pedestal you might even win an award you might just win an award mm. and we are sitting here background being wizard of oz mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and, and then and then crickets. Yeah. And I'm not saying poor me or poor any of these designers. I'm saying equal footing because well, we that's, know that's what Canada's promised. You know, you're you're describing. I mean, the the fashion industry is so notoriously closed and snooty and and white dominant and and exclusive and a philosophy that that I think really counters that is when the pie gets bigger so does everybody's piece. Do you think we're seeing the, the Canadian fashion industry's pie get bigger and therefore, so in this time we're living in, so will everybody's piece? I think the, the, the pie, and when I say gets bigger, I, I think more the, 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 the echoing, the sounding of people saying, enough mm -hmm. of your fucking pie, enough of mm -hmm. your anything, you know what? Whether it's good or bad, if you don't let me in, I, I'm sure every designer has a story or has a booking or has mm -hmm. a person they've talked to that have been denied access into the store, into the venue, into the show, into the thing to say, you know what? Whether a pie is large, I can't see the pie because I'm, I'm still not carried at A, B, and C. But mm -hmm. Echo was out there saying, you know what? If you do not make a move, if you do not change, if we don't just drag you into change, or whether you walk into it yourself, we're going to be heard because after Blackout Tuesday, accountability is on the table. You, another, you know, whoever, whatnot, I can go down to your timeline and see one, one idea of change where it's kind of like, I'm going to hold myself accountable for the first time. I'm going to put a black tile on my Instagram and ruin my tile because I'm going to ruin my theme because it was all yoga and avocado toast. Mm -hmm. Ruin my theme, put a black, and my friends would be like, what, what is that? Like, you were, you, you were going on a roll so much. And uh, holding accountability to those who want change, who I love, and those who actually have to do it by choice, which, well, it's, you know, it is what it is. Either or, whether the pie is expanding or not, changes are coming. And it's one of those things that I'd rather not have to put up. You, you have to do a 15% or else, or threats. I'm not threatening you. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of threatening. Huh? I'm, not threatening. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying change is going to come and you know what? Do the right thing first. If you're a department store and you already know. And the, re the, 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 the wrong, the, well, the, 
the worst thing that could have happened to any department store in, is let me catch this football because it's kind of like I have emails and I have I have receipts and I have records and it sucks to have receipts and records. It's tough mm -hmm. to be better than my counterpart and not get that shelf space. If you have 30,000 square feet of space and you can't find space for one, two black designers, shoe designers, there's not very many of us. There's maybe on the top of my hand and then mm -hmm. I go like this, and maybe like this, I could actually handle an order of 5,000 or 20,000 units at a time. I can handle Simons, Nordstrom, Saks, Hudson Bay at the same time, if they mm -hmm. ordered at the same time. I got my factor. I'll pay for it myself. I've, I've had to factor myself a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, to, just to say, Donna, that whether if I feel the pie, I, I, I don't feel it yet, I right. feel a lot of voices of what I'm saying. I, I see a lot of, of a lot of intentions. I see a lot of people saying, man, did you put one, a black box on your, did you too? I better mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I know, mm -hmm. like Donna, I know these people, like I know these representatives. It might, I might not know the actual uh, Instagrammer that was, pro, that was sent, said, okay, you're going to handle our page. So just, you know, the person that is literally posting these things for these corporations, I'm not sure if it's filtering down or kind of a woke kid saying, Hey, I handle X account, so I'm I'm gonna do it for them. I'm like, I'm gonna save their <laughs> save their corporation. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's behind this, but all I know is that accountability is here. There's a paper trail now. Yeah. So I'm going to ask for things that are just equal, equal footing, and not just for my forget myself. I'm asking for all of these people now that are like, wow, wow, for the first time outside of my own social media platform, I'm being celebrated on another page. Let's start there. Sure, I've had press in different places, so I know how it feels to be outside of my own social and, mm -hmm. and, and seeing, okay, but for all these people, I'm telling you, they're some of the greatest designers that we have. That, that like, it, anyways, it's just, it's, it's, it's uh, you can see the, the, the passion, the passion, my voice. <laughs> the passion uh, is real, George, the passion is real. And I just want to say that House of Hela is, of course, one of the many amazing designers that are on Where Can the Crowd. It's, it's, it's Hila. Hila. She'll, oh she'll my get, God, she'll, I'm so she'll get, sorry. She'll, she'll get, she'll, she'll, she'll oh, be like, eh, House of Hila. Hila, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hey, it, it happens a lot, it happens a lot, it happens a lot. Just, to be honest, it, it's spelled Hela, listen, okay? So everybody at home was like, oh man, I thought, no, don't worry about it. It happens a lot. Don't. House of Hila. Apologies, Hila. I'll never get it <laughs> wrong again. Um, <laughs> You know, there's 150 brands. There's so many to, to discover. I, would, I could keep talking to you all day, George Sully, but we, we do have a schedule here to maintain. Of course. I know there's something exciting that you wanted to just sort of close off with in terms of uh, developments with, your, with, the, with the index. What did you want to share? Uh, I just wanted to share that, you know what, we just dropped a GoFundMe page. And you know what, it's kind of like, you know, all of this and all that we're doing it's not about doing it ourselves or, or, or grouping into a group saying, yes, yeah, you know, because we're all mad. We already mm -hmm. know we're mad as each other, but it's one of those things that, like, it's for the first time, you know, our white counterparts or our Canadians or fellow Canadians, the people that we love are saying, you know what, enough is enough. And they're, stop they're not talking, they're listening. And that's enough to say that, you know what, we actually have the help. Of the or do we have the help? Well, you know what, we're going to have to put a marker again to say, you know what, if there's outrage out there, then there's one channel that you can put it towards. And there's one channel that you can pay into to say, you know what, you're helping tell a story of 150 plus black designers. You're helping tell that story because these videos and all these elaborate videos that the people love to see from me, mm -hmm. they cost. Of course they, they do. Cost. Yeah. And, and you know, if, if you really, if you really want to, if you're really out there for us, you really want to help us out, please. And this is only one, like black owned businesses, there's, there's, we, we, we do exist. So help your black owned businesses. Um, 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 and help your friends have conversations. You know what I mean? I, it starts from the ground up and, and these conversations and inclusion and all these beautiful things. So back to your first question. Yes, together with, you know, with added, with inclusion, this is the most important thing for the fashion industry. Like it isn't, a fashion industry is important for Canada with, with, with inc inclusivity. Like, it, 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 like just, just everybody, equal footing, Equal footing, George. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be Thank here you. with us today. Um, I'm glad that we were able to have this conversation and I look forward to many, many, many more. And for people Pleasure. who are wondering where they can get some of those amazing House of Hyla pumps, 
wearcanadaproud.com. You got it. Later. Take care, George. Take care. Bye. See you. Bye.